You have to have a consistent rhythm to be a great golfer. You look at different golfers, they have different rhythms. You look at myself, I have a fast rhythm. Uh, Nick Price. Patrick Harrington. Then you look at Ernie Els and Fred Couples. They have very slow rhythms. The best rhythm I probably ever saw was Sam Snead. He had a rhythm that he called oily. He wanted to have his, his swing nice and oily. Let's break down the entire golf swing, starting with the takeaway. A long time ago, I read an article about Arnold Palmer saying that the first two feet of the backswing is the most important part of the swing. This is what happens in the backswing. You start the club, left hand, left forearm, left shoulder, the right hand is on for the ride. The left arm, the back of the left hand, take the club back for about the first two feet of the backswing like this. Notice that this arm, this arm, and the club doesn't move position. It moves, just moves back. That's called swinging the club back. What happens a lot of times is people lever the club back immediately with their hands, meaning that their hands go like this away from the ball. They either go around, up, but what happens, it makes the club very heavy in the golf swing. By doing this, the proper way, taking the club back for the first two feet without moving much of anything, now the club can go up and set properly with the hands. When you overuse the hands on the backswing, it can set early, it can unleash early, there are a lot of things that can go wrong. So let's review. Start of the takeaway, think of the back, the left hand, the last three fingers, the forearm, and the shoulder. They all move the club back in unison to about right there. Another key element in the proper takeaway is the hands in, club head out. What you're doing here is this. You're maintaining this angle that the club shaft and your left arm make at address. You maintain that angle going back into your backswing about that far. That's the proper way of doing it. You don't want to break that angle and make that angle get straight like this. A lot of people will lift their hands up and then try to rotate around, or they'll immediately turn off the ball like this. Look, at you've lost your angle. You've lost this angle. You want to maintain that angle deep into your backswing like this so that your hands can hinge properly at the top. The proper takeaway is the hands in, the club head out. Now watch what happens in the backswing. It goes there, like this. When it gets up to the top, your wrists break right up like this. And there's a very, very perfect set position right here. The club is light. The left thumb is underneath the shaft. What happens when you rotate the club, where you get the, the club head in and the hands out, the club head starts here, 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 here. Now the club gets laid off, points over here, and it gets heavy up here with the left thumb on the side of the shaft like that causing all kinds of problems in your golf swing inconsistency. Another key ingredient to a proper takeaway is the tempo of your takeaway. You must find your own body rhythm. I have a very fast, or pretty fast, takeaway. I take it away about that fast. Fred Couples, on the other hand, takes it away nice and slow. Now let's see how this works. Don't forget, there's a sequence that happens. Your left arm, left hand, and left shoulder start the backswing, as we said before. The movement goes this way. The left arm, left shoulder, it goes this way like this, but watch what happens to the left knee. The left knee starts to collapse into the ball like this, and the right hip starts to turn out of the way backwards like this. The key element here is that it is a sequence that your shoulders start your hip turn. Your shoulders start first, then your hips start, your hips are pulled by your shoulders on your backswing. The things we've got to stay away from 
are the straightening of the right knee in the backswing or the flexing outside the right foot of the right knee. Now watch what happens in a bad backswing. This is the dreaded reverse pivot where the right knee straightens and your weight goes forward like this. Or the person who wants to get behind the ball, they, want to, they slide this way and the right knee gets off the ball this way like that. We don't want to do that. What we want to do is continue the sequence on the backswing, which is left arm, left shoulder, club head starts this way, the left knee collapses in toward the ball, the right hip goes back, we get the club up in a proper position like that. That's how we transition into the backswing to the top of it. Another important point in consistency for your backswing is to maintain the angle of your left wrist all the way through to the top of the golf swing. Look, I have a slight break in that angle right there. It's not this way, and it's not this way. It's not cupped, and it's not convex like this. I want to take this angle of that left wrist up to the top of the backswing and keep it the same. It goes back there. It doesn't change. It goes up there like this. It doesn't change. At the top of the swing, it's the same angle, like this. And when it starts down, it still remains the same angle. What happens in a lot of golf swings is that this angle on the backswing changes in the, and it goes this way in the backswing, or it might go even cuppy and, and goes this way in the backswing. What happens to a lot of players is that that angle does not remain the same in the backswing. A lot of times when you take the club back with your hands too much, Look where that angle is right now. It is dead flat. You've lost the cup. You've lost the cup on the backswing. You want to maintain that cup right to there in the backswing so that your, your hands hinge naturally. The way the club head will hinge the hands and keep that slight cup position right there at the top of the swing. Some people say they want a flat left wrist at the top of the backswing. I say you, you go to the top of the backswing with the same left wrist position as you started with at address. I placed a rod down here to show a, a reference point at where you should be on the backswing. When you take the club away and your left arm re reaches horizontal, when my left arm is parallel to the ground, I want the butt of the club to be aiming at that aim line right there. And on the mirror finish, on the, on the follow through, when my right arm is straight, I want that that butt of the club be also aiming right there at the aim line. That means I have made a complete release of the club head on a, on a very concentric arc through the impact area. Remember at the beginning when I said you keep the weight in the balls of your feet? Well, one of the things in the backswing is your weight does not leave the balls of your feet. You transition around with your hips like this, you keep the weight centered along the balls of your feet like this in your backswing. It's, it's centered there like this. You don't want your center of gravity to be moving back and forth like this. Number two, I remember one of the great tips I learned as a kid, and that is you want to turn your lower body in a barrel this way and then that way like this. You don't want to be sliding outside the walls of the barrel this way. You want to be turning in the barrel. Now let's review the whole backswing sequence to make sure that we have it down. We start our waggle, and remember we start with our left hand, left arm, left shoulder. Remember the angle of the shaft and the left arm stays consistent, keeping the club head outside the hands. As our shoulders turn, it also starts to turn our hips. The left knee starts to collapse in toward the ball. And what happens is our right hip is now turning backwards and getting out of the way. My left heel comes off the ground because I like to swing the club up a long way with my left arm. Then we transition up to the top. Right there, we're starting to feel a good tight pull in our back, especially the left side of our back. And what that does is create the torque that you need to create speed on the downswing. Now let's put it to practice and see what happens.
Let's talk about the transition, defined as the change from the backswing to the downswing. I'm often asked two questions. One, what stops the backswing? And the other is, what starts the downswing? Well, the answer is the same. I mean, it's very simple. This is what happens. We have talked about what happens at the top of the backswing, where the club goes back, your shoulders, the club goes back, and you're starting to feel a real tension in your back, in your left side of your back right here, all the way down to your hip. That's the coiling action that we're talking about. We want that coiling action to create some tension there, and what happens is that before the backswing ends, watch my left heel, it goes down like this. That is called separation. What happens is that my lower body separates the turn from my upper body, which is still going back, and creates a little bit of a separation. My hips are a little bit in front of my shoulders now. That's the power move in golf that I think is essential to hitting the ball your maximum distance. All it takes is from there to here, and that allows me to whip on through the ball like that with my hands. All it takes is from there to here, and that allows me to whip on through the ball like that with my hands and arms. One of the keys to the proper transition is that your left shoulder, when it gets up to the top, does not straighten up this way, but it almost feels as if the left shoulder goes down like this, and then your arms come on through. But what you're doing is keeping your shoulders on the same plane. Remember, there and there. If you look at my left shoulder, left shoulder starts this way. It doesn't start that way. That's one of the killers that I see in a lot of golf swings. On the transition, people stand up or they pull up. So let's review this. The transition starts top of the swing, starts with the left heel down, left shoulder down, and from there, my good friend Jack Nicholas said, you can go ahead and release the club with your right hand as hard as you want. Remember, grip pressure here is very important. If you have too tight a grip pressure, you'll go ahead and swing in front of the ball like this and hit it to the right. You've got to have nice, relaxed hands and go ahead and throw that club head at the ball. Let's see if it works. Another question I get many times is, what do I look at when I'm hitting the golf ball? Well, it's pretty simple. I look at the point where I'm making contact with this golf ball, which is directly on this side of the golf ball in the center of it. And I'm looking at the ball. I'm squaring the club head up with the center of that back of the ball. That's where I look at. I look at that point and that point only. Now, a couple other points about the impact area. One from Sam Sneed again, and the other one from my good friend Byron Nelson. Sam Sneed said, start with the club at your starting position this way, take it up to the top, and then come down and stop right there. Try it again. Take it up to the top, come back and stop. My good friend Byron Nelson also had a wonderful tip about the impact position. He said when he was playing his best, his hips and his elbows, his hips and his elbows were very, very close at impact. So when he took the club back and he went like this into the ball, his elbows and hips were close. They weren't out this way, they weren't out this way, but they were close to his body. In fact, he said he wore out the right side of his pants because his right elbow hit the right side of his pants all the time. That keeps the club face in line through the impact area. Now remember this about the impact position. What we try to do is establish a lot of constants in our golf swing so that the bottom of our arc is always forward of the center. What we're trying to do is catch the ball at the beginning of the bottom of the arc. The bottom of the arc is just ahead of the ball. Our goal is to consistently get the bottom of the arc at the same place on the ground every time we swing the golf club. 
We've talked about the impact position, but now let's talk about the follow through to the finish. Now there isn't any time really to think about this, but there are a couple things that you can do to effectively get in the right position on the follow through. One of the things is a tried and true tip that used to use a handkerchief and now we use a towel. Put that under your left armpit there and what the, the whole idea is to hold it there throughout the entire swing. Now this has been used by Sam Sneed, this has been used by VJ Singh, but it's really one of those things that really helps keep you tied in this way. Keep that close to your chest, that's the main thing. Another good tip comes from my mentor Stan Thirsk. With beginners in particular, he gets the club in their hands and he makes them do just half swings. Back where the left arm is the parallel and the right arm is parallel like this. What really helps in the follow through is just to swing it back to parallel like this with your left arm with the club pointing up in the air. Remember on that aim line there and just swing it back again with the right arm straight and the club pointing to the aim line. But he makes the pupils go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth like this. It promotes the proper release going through. It keeps this part of the arm close to your chest as you're hitting it. Hips and elbows close together at impact. Like Byron Nelson said, and then when I was six years old, dad said, all right, son, when you finish your golf swing, finish with your belt buckle facing the hole this way. One last tip. See if you can raise your right foot off the ground when you're in the follow through position like this. That'll help you get to the final position. And you'll be a better golfer because of it. talked a lot about the golf swing and the mechanics of it, but let's put the glue to the golf swing. What ties it all together? Well, it's rhythm, of course. You have to have a consistent rhythm to be a great golfer. You look at different golfers, they have different rhythms. You look at myself, I have a fast rhythm. Uh, Nick Price. Patrick Harrington. Then you look at Ernie Els and Fred Couples. They have very slow rhythms. The best rhythm I probably ever saw was Sam Snead. He had a rhythm that he called oily. He wanted to have his, his swing nice and oily. 